This is the Enlightened Rose Podcast. These two bros think they're intelligent enough to talk about stuff while you spend your valuable time listening to them. Their incredibly intelligent discussions include bro topics like action movies and violent sports, and enlightened topics such as the latest life hacks and geopolitical economics. Dustin and Justin have been friends since they met in middle school in the Midwest and recently moved to the Southeast. Now they're bringing their infinite knowledge to you, dear listener. Heads up, they drop curse words, so earmuffs, little ones. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram for more mind-blowing intelligence. Without further ado, here's your podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Enlightened Bros, podcast number two. Uh, We've got a fun one for you today. Um, I'd say it's either number one or number two on our podcasts all time. Yeah, it's first uh, or second. Yeah, so our, our bro topic today is going to be effing IPAs. Effing IPAs. We do not like them. We don't. You'll like find them. out why. We'll drink them. I'm not going to like if somebody hands me one. You know, second least favorite beer after a sour. <laughs> kind of like this might be your second least favorite Enlightened Bros podcast to date. Maybe. It's 50-50 shot. <laughs> and our enlightened topic today is going to be top Google search terms, you know, of, you know, recent, recent days. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a funny thing to look at, to tell you the truth. And then you could try and tie things together. I don't know. We're just going to yeah. look through it uh, and talk about it. Super enlightened. So enlightened. So enlightened. And then wild card. We're just going to go all wild, wild card on you. Yeah. Well, should we get into it? Yeah. All tell right. me. Um, so we hate IPAs. Hate I, is a strong word. Well, okay. That's fair. We dislike IPAs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would not go to a bar that had like 100 beers on tap and first select the IPA. No. You know what the toughest thing to do in the world is? Go to Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah. And try and drink at the breweries there if you don't <laughs> want to drink IPAs. You walk in and you're just like, what the hell am I doing? Right. I feel like a little bit Minneapolis, where we grew up, is yeah. kind of the same way. Oh, yeah. There's a, there's a whole brewery that just has just all IPAs. IPAs, essentially. But ridiculous. anyways. It's medium ridiculous. So, yeah. So, you've got, you've got some factoids on the history of mm. beer. Mm. Yeah. I did a little research today. I, um, I really, I, my phone's almost dead. I did so much research. <laughs> so, technically, I'm not Googling anything right now. Let it be known. Right. It's like good. on your Evernote or something. Right. Um, we'll just talk, uh, you know, a little bit of beer history. I mean, it goes way back. Mm-hmm. We don't even know how far back it goes. Mm. So says the history books. Wow. Okay. 5,000 years BC. They, they have evidence of beer being made. And right. So it's kind of been around since, you know, forever, basically. Mm-hmm. We don't know when it started. Right. And in fact, it, it, it's so prevalent in all societies that uh, they think that uh, sci- uh, societies individually came up with them, right? They didn't. Wow. They didn't. Okay. It's not like, you know, Italy started making pizza and it's like, oh, we have, uh, we have pizza because of Italy. Right. Or whatever, you know? Okay. There's just, there's beer here, there's beer there. It's in Asia. It's in, you know, you name it, right? It's in everywhere. Um, fun factoid, in Mesopotamia. That's super old. Yeah, a, a long time ago. Right. Someone wrote a poem about uh, in stone honoring the patron goddess of brewing. So, okay. so brewing beer. Okay. Yeah. So, so this, I, I, I don't know. I just feel like I think about prohibition in America. <laughs> like why did anybody ever think that was a good idea? If right? somebody yeah. at uh, one yeah. point in history was like, you know what? Beer is so great. I'm going to carve some stuff in stone about it. Right. Just don't. Uh, yeah. It's been around since. Yeah. I mean. The Mesopotamians. Mesopotamians. Mesopotites. Huh. Mesopotamians. <laughs> Um, generally speaking, women did the most brewing, like they brew it, they brewed at home, you know, you brewed in your home. It's not like, you know, um, Heineken didn't ship, uh, their beer to Mesopotamia via mule, via mule, (laughs) right? Or whatever their food animal in Mesopotamia is. So the women just made the beer for the house. Cool. Um, that sounds great by the way. And it's fun. I also found it does, right? (laughs) Get you a woman who can do both. (laughs) I don't know do what it. the second part is, but the first part is brewing beer. <laughs> you got to do it. <laughs> um, this is fun. I mean, it all everything ties back to the Roman Empire, right? Right. Even back in, yeah, I don't know when Tacitus was emperor, 
Okay. But he insulted. I don't even know that name. It's for the record, <laughs> one of the emperors. <laughs> okay. He insulted the Germanic beers because they were inferior, uh, inferior to wine. Wine was the thing in, uh, in ancient, uh, well, in the Tacitus Empire. Empire, interesting. Yeah, how about that? Yeah. Um, I get it. I was actually just in Italy. Mm-hmm. You know, and, right? Uh, you know, the Peroni's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, they got some good beers. Uh, wine takes the cake. Well, yeah. you're also talking about Italy versus Germany. Yes. Um, okay, so now we fast forward to the Middle Ages. Uh, beer was super popular from kings to peasants. Everybody drank it, right? Again, mm-hmm. why prohibition? Yeah, everybody's no, drinking. Everybody's doing it. Right. In the Middle Ages, hops was mentioned as a flavoring agent by a European abbot, hmm. uh, but it wasn't very widely used. Now here's the, where we start talking about hops, okay? Which is what makes you know us hate those IPAs a little yep. bit. Yep. Wikipedia, if you believe, I read Wikipedia on this topic. Wow. Isn't that crazy? So this is, may or may not be true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> fact check us. Fact check this. But you can't fact check us on Wikipedia. You can't because clearly it came from right. Wikipedia. Uh, they say hops was only uh, adopted slowly because of the difficulty. Are you ready for this? Yes. The difficulty in getting the flavors right. Yes. So basically, today, you. brewers don't give a shit. Preach. <laughs> right. <laughs> Preach. <laughs> like, like, Back in the day, they were like, let's not use this stuff. We can't yes. make sure that the flavors are balanced. I know. <laughs> <laughs> now it's just. I feel like I just win this argument. Right. For years, two or three years, yeah. I've been saying, like, I don't like IPAs anymore. When they came out, they were great. Like, yeah, I, I, I drank agree. them. They were flavorful. I got drunk Murder. off them quick. And yeah. I like them. Yes. Then after a while, and I'll still drink them, but I don't choose them because one. I just prefer other beers. The other beers are more drinkable, yep. flavorful. Two, yep. I think a brewer who goes in and throws mm-hmm. a bunch of the ingredients into a thing yep. and waits a little bit, mm-hmm. pours that beer out into his glass, he's going to have an IPA. I don't know if that's true at all. That's like literally just, just my guess. opinion. <laughs> but if you put hops and barley and ferment it and whatever water, right, it's going to come out similar to an IPA. Yeah. So why would I go around and be like, you know what? Give me your product that has the least amount of work put into it. Can I have that? Thanks. <laughs> like I might as well go out and buy a hey. Kia. I don't know. <laughs> Kias are pretty nice right now, but what's a crappy Spawn car point. now? I don't even know. Like a Daewoo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Can I get a Mitsubishi? Yeah. Can you? I don't think you can. Probably not because they were so... Similar to IPAs, people were like, we're going to stop building these. <laughs> totally. Perfect. So, okay. We are complaining about hops. And we're saying thanks a lot, brewers, for introducing hops to our beers and, and junk. Right? right. Right. But they do say hops is credited with greatly improving the quality and flavor of beer around the 15th century. Hmm. You steep hot, like grains in hot water to extract the starches into sugars. Mm-hmm. You're going to get a pretty sweet thing uh one beer writer said if you didn't add hops you would get something that tasted like soda something that tasted like coke okay i don't see the downside to this yeah i'm on board <laughs> let's do it uh and as a matter of fact i think they i think you've heard of mead m-e-a-d oh, yeah. mead yeah. uh i think it's just a really sweet beer because they didn't use hops right and it's super you know early early right. type of beer right? right so anyways uh this is one of my favorite parts. Yeah. I wish I could have seen this happen. <laughs> in 1516, Bavaria passed a beer purity law. You still see it on uh, some of the German, almost all the German beers, I think. I uh-huh. mean, and they talk about that this, this beer you know, subscribes to the you know, 1516 German Bavarian beer purity law or whatever. Okay. They're really proud of it. And they should be. Right. It restricts the ingredients of beer. Uh, produced in Bavaria. And of course, Bavaria and some other you know, countries or whatever became Germany. Mm-hmm. Uh, the law was formally adopted by Germany in 1987. Nice. We were uh, alive when that happened. I know. Isn't that kind of cool? And so this is considered the oldest food regulation still in use. The flavor and quality of beers, even to that point when mm-hmm. Germany passed that crazy law, 
uh, is likely relatively inconsistent until the invention of thermometers in the 1700s and then hydrometers, which measured the gravity of how heavy oh, right. the thing was, right? right. The, the beer. Uh, then they invented those things. The brewer has more control. They know what they're coming up with, right? I mean, right. imagine right. imagine making coffee without knowing what temperature the water was. Oh, my God. Unreal. I've done it. and it probably I've, just tastes like crap. I've, <laughs> <laughs> tell me about it. I have measured... I, I'm not lying to you right now. Okay. I don't know if I've told you this. I don't know. Give it to me. <laughs> I have measured the temperatures of the different hot waters at my work <laughs> so that I know which is the best water to make coffee with. How many hot waters do you have at work? <laughs> I've got one setting, and I just know it's not a, okay to brew coffee. Yeah. Off of. Yeah. So yeah, Bavaria had that thing. Uh, they, okay. they, uh, someone invented uh, thermometers. You could make better, mm -hmm. better beer and know what you were making. Huge stuff. I mean, that changed right. the face of brewing because before they were just making, they were just trying to get something out of the thing, you know? Hmm. And now, of course, just like coffee, the temperature right. makes a huge difference, right? It's huge. So now brewing this beer locally is going great, right? Usually, right. you know, right. back in the day, uh, before thermometers and, you know, it was smaller operations, mm -hmm. mostly you made it at home. Right. Some medium-sized operations were uh, uh, brewing beer maybe for the community. Uh, now they've got thermometers and they've got bigger companies and they're brewing. And, right. And, uh, you know, we'll fast forward. Um, in Britain, they were blasting out you know, plenty of delicious beers. Generally speaking, you got to heat up the water. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, you heated up water with fire, right? Yeah. So all this stuff gets into the beer. And, you know, you did your best to try and keep your beer not smoky. You don't want smoky. Now it's like you got a smoked porter and everyone's like, give me that. Give me that, yeah. But back in the day, you did whatever you could to keep smoke flavor out of your right. beer. Right. Anyways, Britain... Going over to India, you know, they're doing their thing, taking over India or mm -hmm. whatever. Yep. And they had a company over there. I don't know. I'm just imagining them chopping stuff down with machetes. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, it's probably hot, doing But that. it's hot. Yeah. You know, when it's hot and you're chopping stuff down with machetes and your company brings in all the beer and it's barrels and barrels and barrels of warm, months, months, months old porter. Right. Like a smoked porter. Sounds terrible. Yeah. All your people are like, no, no. Not that I don't like a smoked porter. I'm just saying I don't want to drink it in 90 degree heat as they're degree chopping degree porters. jungle. I mean, if somebody makes a porter, usually they make it in the winter. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, in London, you're sitting there in London and you're chilly, rainy, snowy, whatever. Right. Porter sounds great. Yeah. Let's have a porter. All the time. Now we're in India. We're chopping this stuff down. I think you see where this is going probably what the i stands for that is what the i stands for <laughs> right so they're, yeah. so they're so they're so they're kind of complaining about this beer and the company making this beer is like well we'll try some stuff we'll do some things they did they tried something where they concentrated the beer mm -hmm. the, probably another porter and shipped it over in their barrels and then they brought it and they brought it to india they brought it to these guys and they diluted it there with water and they're like this also sucks <laughs> <laughs> like I can't imagine a concentrate. Bring Sounds me some terrible. porter concentrate. <laughs> Bring me some porter that after I water it down is about 3% <laughs> right. ABV. Right. Yeah, negatory. Yum. So yeah, these beers were no good. They tried several things. They were trying to do this. They, they did the dilution thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think I just barfed in my mouth thinking about that. Yep. Sounds um, terrible. And then, and then the company said, well, okay, there are these things called pale ales. And you heat it. Uh, not with wood or charcoal or whatever else they use to to, to heat that stuff up, but they use something uh, they use something that cr that that created a clearer brew, and mm -hmm. they used a clear I think clear mash or or whatever the, the the ingredients were. So it was a a lighter colored beer than these darker beers that are okay. So it was what they called a pale ale because it was pale Pose. in color. Yeah, got it. Rather than dark in color. Man, you see where this is going. That's the PA. That's the PA, right? <laughs> so you've got this, so so they shipped this thing over, and these guys right. were going crazy because it was this light, flowery, tasty thing. Right. Oh, also these these ales they made in this fashion. You know, people would keg them or barrel them, mm -hmm. like when their son was born, 
and then crack them open 18 years later when they turned 18 to be like, hey, it's your 18th birthday. So they're, so they're known, these beers are known to last. Like right. six months on a ship across the ocean, it's not going to kill them. Right. right? So he says, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Uh, and to top it off, here's the kicker. Hops were added to preserve the brew and keep it tasting fresh and give it flavor. So now they got this pale ale sent mm-hmm. to India with mm-hmm. all these damn hops in it. Hmm. And you've got the IPA. So the hops are added to preserve. Yeah. Yeah. So hops, yeah, hops has the like anti my, my, my ant, Yes. They preserve the beer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Whatever that word is. Yeah. Uh, uh, bacterial? Antimicrobial. Microbial. Microbial. Yeah, it's kind of like dial soap. <laughs> so if you drink IPAs, yes. ergo... There go. You're drinking dial, dial soap. soap. It kind of yeah. tastes like it sometimes. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes. Yeah, it sometimes it tastes like it. Sometimes it's terrible. So it sucks. And then, you know, you can also make fun of us for not liking the IPA. The IPA has a lot of crazy flavor and right. so much excitement and everything. You know, we keep talking about Prohibition. Right. During Prohibition, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if you've watched... Uh, what's what Boardwalk the, Empire. Boardwalk Empire. Good show, yeah, man. So good. Uh, they watered down their spirits, right? Yeah. You water down that spirit... You gotta make it. It's like your shampoo when you're on a budget. Yeah, ballers on Con- a budget, man. Conditioner in college, just That's right. <laughs> water down, just water it down, man. So, so they did that with beer too, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. so they so they watered it down with beer, and it sounds like some historians say that contributed to the U.S.'s desire uh, weaker beers, like mm. the Miller Lights and the Bud Lights. A lot of people make fun of me for drinking the High Life, but you're living the High Life. I'm living the High Life, right? So, should I drink a beer that's Kaboom. According exactly. to my lifestyle? According to you. It's like <laughs> you're drinking the champagne of beers, man. Right. There's yeah. nothing wrong with Come it. Come at me, bro. Come at me, bro. <laughs> so, right, so, okay. so that's that's kind of the history of beer. You get into the IPAs. You get into hops. You, mm-hmm. You're getting all this junk. Right. Uh, you know, it's taken off like uh, hotcakes or whatever. But now we're here. We're in America. Right. We're dealing with the craft beer explosion. Yes. Sierra Nevada is actually credited with starting the whole craze. Right. Because they made the Sierra Nevada India. Was it just a uh, uh, Sierra Nevada IPA? I think so. And um, Or no, just plain uh, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. I think. I don't oh, know if yes. they called yes. it an IPA You're at right. the time. Yep. Yep. It's just Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. And nobody would even think about doing this many hops in their beer. But this guy mm-hmm. did it mm-hmm. uh, uh, at Sierra Nevada. And that took off, and right. that kind of started. He's credited, I believe, with, with starting that craze with all the hops in these things. Hmm. Um, so, if you're looking to seek vengeance on <laughs> IPAs, I am. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. We don't condone any no, thing. We don't. Nothing. We don't. <laughs> you're just saying fine. That Positive out. or negative? Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying. Like, we know where it started. We Patient zero. Patient zero. That guy. Sierra Nevada. Right. <laughs> There was a beer writer that I read today mm-hmm. that kind of half said we need to get out of our hoppy, uh, our, our, our just straight hops craft mm-hmm. beer mm-hmm. world because it's kind of ruining it for people. Yeah, People think craft beer means ultra hoppy beer. And I'm going to be honest. Now, you know, when I liked IPAs, which I did, yeah. you know, like you yeah, said early, yeah. earlier on, I was just like, oh, hell yeah, craft beer. Mm-hmm. And now people are like craft beer this and craft beer that. I don't want to. I'm just like, I, I just say no, thank you. Right. Uh, because of the hops. And so this is really this this writer was kind of explaining that phenomenon. People just are turned off to craft beer in general, right. which I agree is not a great thing. But that's what happens in my head. Right. I love a good craft. Pilsner. Yeah. So good. Bebo Pilsner by Creature Comforts oh, in, my in Athens, goodness. Georgia. It's- very good. So good. Yep. And in fact, I do like uh, Tropicalia, the IPA from Creature yeah. Comforts. It's an IPA, but it's a different IPA. And it so this, tropical I think IPA. this is a good opinion. This, we don't hate IPAs. Right. There are IPAs out there that I <laughs> thoroughly enjoy. Tropicalia is one of them. It's a good one. Uh, Bells out of Michigan. I yes. really like their Two Hearted. You do like their Two Hearted? It's very hoppy. The it's funny- a double IPA, so it's like super IPA. Right. But I enjoy it. The funny thing is, when I when I asked if you wanted to talk about hating IPAs yeah. on this podcast, yeah. I was like, he's not going to want to talk about that because he loves Bell's Too Hearted. That's what I thought in my yes, head. Yes, I do. I, I actually really love Bell's Too Hearted. But for, it's a good beer. For a while, and, and this was even after I started my dislike of most IPAs, 
two hearted, I was like, that's probably the beer I could drink anytime. Yeah. Like if I want a flavorful beer, beer, great. If I want to drink beer to get my buzz on great, even greater because yeah. it's double IP. Like, you know what I mean? So it's, I think this is a good time to get in there and say like, these are specific examples of yes. IPAs that we like. Surly out of Minneapolis. Surly I furious. referred to them earlier. I'm on board. About they make a lot of IPAs or mm-hmm. some sort of very hoppy beer. Mm-hmm. But they're furious. They're like signature beer. I will drink it's special at any time of the day mm-hmm. on any day. Mm-hmm. As long as I wouldn't get fired for it. Like I would do it. <laughs> yep. And uh, totally. Yeah. So like there, there are IPAs out there that I enjoy. I'm tired of you make a beer. Mm-hmm. And it's just an IPA and there's nothing special about it and it sucks or it's just fine. Like there's, there's nothing American about just, okay. Like if you think <laughs> brewing your own beer is American, like Bud Light is more American than you because they tried to make a light beer <laughs> that still has some flavor. You put some stuff in a barrel, waited a few months, took and it out. It, and and that's what, that's what you got. Yeah. Um, I would disagree with you. Okay. There's nothing more American than doing something half-assed and making huge profit. <laughs> well, you got to make the profit, though. Like, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah that's true. That's true. Okay, fair point. <laughs> okay. As long as we, yeah, as long as we agree on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, this beer writer I was talking about reading today, the, this, this writer also said uh, using the hops mm-hmm. is an easy way out to be creative with your brewing. Hmm. Which, uh, it's great. I mean, because, yeah, there are different strains of hops. There are tons of different strains and new strains being created and, you know, right. I don't know. Right. So, so all these different kinds of hops um, can put this different flavor into your beer. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you can go out there and uh, find a strain of hops that people aren't using very much and put it in a beer. And now you're like, look, I got a new different beer. Right. And you didn't pay a lot of attention to the brewing process. You right. didn't make sure everything was right, but you got a bucket of hops and you mm-hmm. threw it in there mm-hmm. and it's good to go because right. it tastes like that hops that you wanted it to taste like. Hmm. They say that can disguise mistakes and poor brewing methods, stuff like that. Yeah. Right. So, so, okay, brewers, congratulations. Right. Y'all are making, you've got a, I walk into your brewery and you've got 12 beers on the menu and you're like, this one is super hoppy. This one is lightly hoppy. This right. one is pretty hoppy. Right. This one is so, so hoppy. This is our Pilsner. We don't really think about it very much. So it's not very good. Right. Congratulations, I guess. I, I don't know. I, I, uh, That's my thoughts exactly. Down. Yeah. I mean, if you, do, if you do a good IPA, I'll enjoy it. I'll yes. drink it. I'll probably order it, actually. Sure. If I look at a menu and say, oh, yeah, I'll have that. Like a furious. Right. But if you don't, or if you, if you, tr- if you quote unquote try at your IPAs, mm-hmm. but you don't try at your Kolsch or yes. your Pilsner or your Stout or your Gose. 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 Go say, mm. <laughs> then, then no, I'm done with you. Like I don't, I, that means you, you only, you go for the fastest route out. You don't want quality. I'm not Get out. it. Get I don't out. want your beers. Get out of the beer game. No more beers. You're very no American for selling crap, but <laughs> get no, out of the beer game. No soup for you. Right. Speaking of hops, go back a f- several years. I don't mm-hmm. I, I, with a buddy did some bitters, uh, making, Right. And um, I think I still have some of that in my kitchen, by the way. Gosh, I don't know if that's safe. <laughs> we'll find out. Whatever. <laughs> Go for it. Um, so, yeah, we did, you know, we did a couple flavors. You obviously are talking probably about the Christmas one, I think. Yep. Uh, this, that was a good one. Still smells good. Bottoms up. Bottoms down. <laughs> bottoms up. It. Bottoms up. Yeah. yeah not, bottoms down. Yeah. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> just set it there. Just put it on the table. Sit on it for bottoms another two down. years. Don't touch that anymore. <laughs> Um, um, so we, so we took all these different, uh, flavors and with bitters, I mean, it's, you know, you, you have, uh, literally, uh, cherry bark, cherry right. tree bark, um, black fig leaf, hmm. uh, no black walnut leaf. I don't know. All these different things that you put into the, the recipe to make a, a, a little cocktail bitters. Right. And, uh, one of them you could do was hops. Hmm. And so you, uh, what I did was get a bunch of the hops flowers, mm-hmm. um, dried hops flowers, and threw them into, I don't know if it was vodka or Everclear or something, and that extracts that flavor. Yep. And I couldn't believe how much it just alone, once you, 
you, know, you extract it for several weeks and then pull the dry solids out and then you have the liquid and you strain mm-hmm. it all out and you've got uh, basically a hops extract, right? Sure. It just tasted, it just smelled and tasted like a super hoppy beer. Hmm. So it was a perfect example of like, you do nothing. Yeah. You, yeah. You pour liquid into it. Exactly. You wait and it tastes like a beer. And it, and it tastes like, it tastes like beer. Yeah. So, huh. Seriously, do more, brewers. Do, do, do more. more. Do less. No, do more. Do more. You're not doing enough. <laughs> now you're just trying too hard. Yep. So let's talk about the trend of microbreweries. Yes. Because I think a little bit of it is regional. Yeah. Um, but I also think that there is like this general trend. And I think people are trying to move away from hoppy beers. You think? I think because the general public, the mass... We're mainstream exactly what this writer wrote about public yes like, is settle down on the, like on the, we on don't the, want craft beers garbage. because we associate them with hops i believe it and so the good microbrews out there are focusing on sours pilsners ales in general right not pale ales but yeah you know the regular beers and then we're good regular beers yeah and then some of the regions uh for example sit so down here in the south i've noticed mm-hmm. a lot of sours in the north i've noticed a lot of like stouts and other assorted hmm. dark beers. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, so I think of the climates in the because of the, the climates, summer, yeah. Right? Like Minnesota, you go there, and even in July, it's you know eighty degrees with a light breeze. It feels like seventy-five. <laughs> you can drink a stout year-round there. Yeah. Down here, people go sours because they're light, they're refreshing, they're fruity. Whatever. I disagree with all that, but okay. You do? Okay. Sours. What? Sours can go join IPAs. No, I mean, I agree with garbage. that, but yes, I totally agree <laughs> with that part of it. I'm just saying, like, would you ever call an IPA, like, light and refreshing? I mean, that's what they were made for. I mean, yes, the right the right IPA, I, I would. Okay, all right. That's what they were made for. They were made to be, like, flowery, light, and refreshing for the those poor Brits in I- India. Right, right, but, like, for you as an American born in 83, <laughs> like, did you ever think 80s 90s or today did you ever think that i an ipa that you drank right that you drank was refreshing uh, maybe a couple of the ones that are very okay. light and flowery okay. and stuff like, like that but yeah generally, i think maybe no. a tropicalia generally. could be refreshing totally i've never drank a furious and be like man this is just so refreshing once it hits your lips <laughs> once it hits your lips i hear you there i hear okay. you there right. yep totally another thing there's a thing called session beers right. now. And you've heard of this. Session yeah, I beers. I like them. and I um, Right? Yeah. I'm going to tell you why you like them. Okay. Craft brewers have started calling beers you can drink several of in a session hmm. a session beer. Wow. That's why they call it a session beer. I always wondered what session meant. The thing that bugs me is, and maybe this is super American of me, since when are beers not supposed to be drank several of? Yes. Craft beers have become so undrinkable. That they needed to introduce a new category of right. a drinkable right. craft beers called session beers. Right. I look at beers like Lay's potato chips or Pringles. I once you pop, Pringles. you can't stop. <laughs> yeah, once you pop, you can't stop. <laughs> it's until you have to stop. Until you literally are barred. Yeah. But you're, I mean, we were just talking about like, you remember the 90s when we first could remember watching TV and you had like Bud Light or Miller Light that was like great taste, less filling. Tastes great. Won't fill you up. Never fills you up. Always lets you down. Never lets you down. I don't know what it is. No, always, always, always never lets you down. Never fills you up. That doesn't work. Is it too never? It's not too never. I don't think so. Always you like it. Never fills you up. (laughs) Always you like it. (laughs) So yeah, that, that session beers. Like, so Miller Lite is the ultimate session Session beer. beer. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. Bud Light. When you're like 20 to 21, Natty Ice is the ultimate oh. session beer. <laughs> In Minnesota, it's Michelob Golden MGD. Light. MGD? Yeah, they don't have that down here. Yeah, I know. Isn't that weird? Yeah, they don't like it. Which is so weird because it's a St. Louis thing. Here's like, another thing. Yeah. We, yeah, right? We did a blind light beer taste test once. Yes, we failed. We failed. Spoiler alert. So, to sum it up, Right. Fing IPAs, yeah, f them, f them right in their IPA faces. <laughs> okay, yep. Yeah. 
when we were in Belgium and you were just recently there, just there a few days ago. Yeah. Yesterday. Um, when, when you and I went, I remember there was a guy from Belgium that basically mm -hmm. told us like, it's their goal. Like the monks who brew the beer, which is a lot, right. You know, they look at it of how alcoholic can we make a beer, but still have it taste good. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's very cool. But none of them were IPAs. Right. Right. Like you think of a Belgian beer, it's not even close to an IPA. Right. But at the same time, if we add more hops, generally it becomes more alcoholic. Interesting. Just food for thought. I don't know if that's like a question or what, but. Yeah. Yeah. A hoppy IPA, higher alcohol content, right. generally speaking. And that is, uh, that was the same back then. It's the same now. I wonder mm -hmm. if that's just because that's how they made them back then. Right. And so they have kept doing it. Like, could you make a Pilsner that alcoholic, or would it taste gross? Is the hops it might hiding, taste gross. Yeah. Is the hops hiding the flavor of the alcohol? Right. I don't know. Right. I don't know enough about brewing to say that. So. Oh my gosh. I didn't research enough. Dang it. Okay. Well, we'll have a part two to this. We will. Okay, one last fun beer fact. Let's do it. Uh, and then we can move on to our next topic. Great. Have you seen Doctor Strange? The, the Netflix one? No. Wait, is it Netflix? The Benedict... No, no. It's, like the it old one. No, oh, no, yeah. No, no. The brand new one, Benedict Cumberbatch, is Doctor oh, Strange. Oh, no, I did not see that one. Dude. It's on Netflix, I think. Perhaps. Maybe that's why I call it that's the Netflix one. Cool. <laughs> you think it's a Netflix one? When did it original? come out? A year ago, maybe. Not even... Okay, Six maybe months it's ago? Not, I don't know. Maybe it's coming to Netflix. Here's the thing. <laughs> I think I got an email on it is all I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Well, see it because okay. it's good. Yeah. It's, it's, I, as a matter of fact, I, I, I like him. Like it. As I almost an actor. like it more. I, lo I love him as an actor. Yeah. You know what they call uh, Benedict Cumberbatch fans in the fan group? I don't think you can. <laughs> Go. Cumberheads. <laughs> Close. Except Damn not. <laughs> what it does use his last name. They call them Cumber Bitches. They literally call themselves Cumber Bitches. Are you sure they call themselves yes, that? Or does yes. just the internet call them that? <laughs> That's a fair question. It's two very different things. I think they call themselves that, but I don't know. Wow. How we'll have to look it up. Wow, I don't want to like him anymore. <laughs> I, I don't ever want to be considered that. It's not. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I thought it was. I, I thought you meant because of that. Yeah, no. Like, I don't want to walk up to somebody on the street and be like, man, I really like uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. And they'll be like, oh, I'm a Cumberbitch too. And I'll be like, no, 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 no. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't say that. I just enjoyed him as Sherlock is all I'm saying. <laughs> I, think, I think generally speaking, it's the girl fans, oh. perhaps, <laughs> that call themselves that. Okay, good. But, you know, I might call you that from now on. Damn it. I, sorry. <laughs> Sorry also, feminism, that. hashtag feminism, yeah. 2017, don't call right? yourself that. Don't call it, or maybe by calling themselves that, Ooh. they own the word. Taking now. the power out of the word. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, moving on. All right. At the end of the after credits scene, yeah. this isn't going to ruin anything for anybody. There's no, there's no, right. Right. No spoiler alert. Uh, the after credits scene, he's sitting in a chair. Oh, mm -hmm. I guess I ruined the movie. He didn't die at the end. <laughs> shocking shocking uh, he's sitting in a chair and thor comes in and they're talking about the next thing or whatever and uh spoiler alert thor thor he didn't die in the second or third one or whatever right he offers him a cup of tea or something like that mm -hmm. uh, i'm pretty sure it's tea and thor goes and he literally hands him the cup and the cup goes off screen and he goes no tea's not really my my beverage or whatever and then he looks back down and it's a giant beer stein full of beer and he chugs the beer yeah, to the bottom. Then he sets the mug back down and it refills itself. I love this mug. Isn't this amazing? Where do I get one? And so I, I saw that and I'm just like, oh, that's really funny. You know, he's kind of showing how, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, Dr. Strange is showing how he bends space and time and can make magic things happen. Right. Well, if you go back to Norse, mythology okay thor brought this cauldron back for the god aegis i think is his name okay and uh this this god creates you know cr brews beer in this cauldron for the other gods that's my kind of god that's a great god <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> and so and so thor got him this cauldron and 
this god serves beer out of this cauldron. Mm -hmm. And in these mugs that the Norse gods are all drinking their beer out of, the beer refills itself in these mugs. So I just thought that was a really cool reference. That's a great reference. Really good. I like it. Reference there. Way to go, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. Well done. Every yeah, time. so well thought out. Every time. Yep. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. So should that, should we cap it? That's yeah, our beer topic. Th- there it is. Capped. FIPAs. Like. Bring me a Pilsner. Freshly brewed beer. Capped. I, uh, we're drinking Lef Belgian Ale. Is it called Lef? Lef. Okay. L-E-F-F-E. I feel like I just make it too Belgian. I'm like Lefe. We did that though. Do you not remember this? We were in the Belge- the nope. Brussels airport. <laughs> <laughs> you clearly don't remember this. <laughs> Ten years ago, eight years ago, something like that. Yeah, it we were, was. Uh, we were in the Brussels airport. Yeah, seven years ago. Seven years ago, we were in the Brussels airport, and we had just landed. Yeah. And we went and got beers. Yep. And we ordered Lef, and I literally called it Lefe, and they were like, "Oh, you want a Lef?" And I was like, Ugh. "Already messed up." So I learned my lesson there. I did not. I, you did not. Nope. I was like, doesn't matter. I'm drinking it. Never. I don't know if I was sober on that trip once. Uh, probably not. You know no what I gravity. do remember about that trip? Tell me. Jesus. <laughs> so this, who was actually a Spanish dude, but lived yes. there. Yeah. Maybe still lives there. He does. He, um, he I told tried to us. meet up with him when we were there. Oh, really? Yeah. He said, you Americans have to be careful. <laughs> the beer is not the same as it is in America. <laughs> and I remember looking at him like, dude. We're Americans. Like, we've got this. <laughs> we got this. We can handle this. I don't know if you know how much beer we drink, but it's a lot. But we got this. And s- literally six beers later, like on my feet, moving back and forth, like, holy crap. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I've, they, they I've only in, had six. They come in hard and fast. Yes. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's good. It's yeah. great. Anyways, on that note, I'm going to get another beer. On that note, uh, we're going to take a break and then we'll be right back. Hello, dear listener. We hope you're enjoying this episode. Please do follow the Enlightened Bros on Facebook and Instagram. I know I do, and I can't get enough of their witty posts and incredible wisdom. And pictures of steak. Good God, the steak. How much steak do they eat? Anyway, on with the show, and thank you for listening. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Enlightened Bro podcast. Uh, So now we're going to look at a list of the top non-branded all-time Google search terms uh, excluding porn. They took porn out, which... Lame. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, it's probably a good, a good thing. Well, if this is an enlightened topic, yeah, that definitely helps. <laughs> <laughs> just slightly. Just a tiny bit. Um, so I, you know, what should we do? We'll just start at the top, huh? Yeah, uh, or the bottom? I don't know. You want to count? To number one, or do you want to count to number ten? No, that would be boring unless it was really cool, but it's not because number one is weather. Weather. I here's here's my thing. Mm-hmm. I don't really Google weather that much anymore. I wonder how it'll change in the next uh, few years. Yeah, because I have the Amazon Echo. Oh right, and also, hey just, Alexa, what's the weather today? Right now in Atlanta, it's seventy three degrees with clear skies and sun. Tonight's forecast has clear skies. Alexa, stop. Yeah, okay. Yeah, does that count as a right. Google? I don't think so. No, obviously not. Does it on your weather app on your phone? No. So, it's got to change. Yeah. That can't I, be number one so. for long, right? That's a good point. I totally get it, though. But old people. I think that's going to become more prevalent as we continue to go through this list. Right. Uh, so, we've got uh, uh, weather. And then the second one is translate. I think that's kind of, I mean, I don't know. That's kind of interesting. I think I used that. I have used it before, but I don't think I use it that much. Like, yeah. What are you What are you translating on a daily basis? Here's it. Well, it, but it just makes you wonder. Like, does it have the numbers of number of Googles? Yeah. You ready per month? You ready? Yes. Yeah. This, this this exactly searches per month. Weather was at forty five million. Okay. Translate is at less than half at 20 million. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Less than half. So the number one by far is weather. Literally twice as right. much as number two. Right. Number two is translate. Uh, number three is maps. I get it. You know, you got to figure out where you're going to go. That's probably what I use more than anything. 
Hold on, though. So people just Google the word maps? <laughs> maps. <laughs> I mean, maybe, like literally, you can, <laughs> you can type in an address. Right. Or you can type in Chili's yeah. and a map will come up. <laughs> you know this. I know. But like the 13 million people Googling maps don't know that. That's like 13 million people a month who have a never month. used the internet. To right. know that if you type anything in, a map comes up. Right. Dustin's house. I've literally, I've labeled this as your house. And now I type in Dustin's and your place will come up. I'm sure. I was just going to say, I bet I could Google your name and yeah. a map would come up to something. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> There's a, there was a Puff Daddy restaurant here in Atlanta called Justin's. So you might end up there. You might end up at the old Puff Daddy restaurant. It's, yeah, it doesn't Back exist Back when anymore. his name was Puff Daddy. <laughs> what is it now? Just plain Diddy? P. Diddy? No, Diddy? I think it's Diddy. I don't know. That's Eventually it's going to be Diddy Kong. <laughs> Diddy Kong. It's going to be the next one. <laughs> I like it. Why not, man? He just goes for it. Uh, number four is news. Good job, people. Staying yeah. up with the current events. Yeah, that's good. Number five is calculator. You know, you can just type in 45 minus 5. <laughs> 12 times 2. Just go for it. You want to type in the whole word calculator. To then input 45 minus 5. Do you got to click before you can do that. Right. Yeah, also, right. also, are you Googling from any electronic device? Are you? Because the calculator is built in. <laughs> like, I get it. Maybe you're going for efficiency, but... I'm Googling from a typewriter. Efficiency is not Googling no. type or calculator. Not at all. Are you ready for number six? This yeah, one's really cool. Number six. The letter G. <laughs> Just the letter G. I don't even know. Like that they has to be to Google like, Google. How many how many Googles does that have every? Single? This this is at um, seven 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 and a half million. Seven and a half million Googles for every G. month for G. Just the letter G. Do you know of besides the last five Google results? Do you know of anything else that happens seven million times? In a month, <laughs> every month. No, <laughs> not really. Maybe it's that's insane. Like, because I I saw that today. I was we were researching this topic, and I saw that, and I yeah. thought it has to be just people hitting G for some reason. Maybe Google. It's one of the most on your keyboard, right? It's like one of the most right used there. letters, and you hit enter. You just like hit it, and then hit enter mistake. accidentally. Mm-hmm. That that mistake. That means that that mistake happens. 7 million times a month. Approximately one and a half million times more than Googling dictionary, <laughs> which is number eight. What's number wow. seven? Yeah. This is very specific, which is funny because you've got calculator, news, maps, translate, dictionary. G. At, at number seven, G. Less, less than being Googled. Yeah. G yep. gets Googled more than the phrase YouTube to MP3. Hmm. It, it was all very generic until YouTube. Damn it. Like there's one thing they're trying to do right there. Right. Steal that song. Yeah, totally. And it's just out there on the internet. Right. That again, that has to be dated. Well, it's, it's, um, all time, I believe. Right. But like law of averages, mm-hmm. it's going to change. Right. Because more people are using computers. And, yeah. I mean, sp- you have Spotify as a free thing you can get a free version of spotify which allows you to listen to almost well, any song ever you'd have to be able to google facebook login in order to get to facebook login <laughs> to sign up for facebook to get spotify so i don't know <laughs> about that i don't know that's true it's much simpler to youtube to mp3 i'm, I'm assuming <laughs> i'm assuming exactly have you ever done that youtube to MP3? without incriminating yourself do you uh, let's uh, let's phrase it this way do you know anybody who's ever done that speaking for a friend yeah Talking for a friend. Maybe. I've never pulled it from YouTube, I don't think. I think I did it once. I mean, I think a friend well, did it once. Because <laughs> your friend had all his CDs stolen eight times. Right. But yeah. You know, get those songs back somehow. I, I honestly think it was like not for that. I think yeah. it was for like a video. Like okay. I was yes. editing a video and I was like, yes. oh, here's the only way I can get mm-hmm. this song. Mm-hmm. I've tried that. I did it. And then... It worked. It sucked. I mean, it, yeah, it worked, but like not. It's a pain in the. Not butt. like, oh man, I'm gonna do this for 20 songs yeah, and then get the whole put it onto a CD and like cruise around my town and with my CD player. It's 1999, by the way. Yes. Uh, number nine. Yeah. 
at 5 million Google searches a month. Mm-hmm. Brought to you by the letter F. <laughs> so just two spots, three spots below G is F. So right next. So it's, either your, it's either your left index finger or your right index finger. So that's got to be the second most typoed letter with I, an immediate return hit. It must be. And the funny thing is, there are no other. I'm going all the way down. You've got to get to number... <laughs> You gotta get to number fifty-five before you get a single letter again. Is it a strong S? It's B. 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 Yeah. I don't know why. Man, the world is so messed up. Dude. You know what I think this is? I think it's people starting to type branded names because they pull out all the branded names, right? So obviously, Google stuff is gonna be first because you're in Google, so mm-hmm. you're in the Google ecosystem already. Okay. So G is gonna be first. So next, like Gmail. Gmail. Or G. Google. Google Maps, Maps, Google Translate, got it. Google News, you name it. Killing it, yeah. And then you've got number two, Facebook. So people, people just people just hit okay. it. Because think about it. Yep. You type the first letter, and usually your browser fills in the rest. So if you always go to Facebook, trust me, I've Google. I believe I've Googled F. Trust me, I've Googled face about a trillion times myself. Have you Googled? <laughs> A trillion? <laughs> I'm just guessing. Dang, I'm you, I mean, law of averages, you've probably made up all of that five million a month on the <laughs> right. letter F. Right? Maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> like, how many months has the internet been around? I, exactly. Divide that by, divide that by five million <laughs> by or multiply trillion. it, I guess. Right. And you might get a trillion. So I think it's brand, because they've so, a lot of the branded names. So what's B? Boston Market? <laughs> <laughs> Like, what's the B brand name that everybody's uh, going for? There was another list that I was looking at that had like some, list. Some, chi- <laughs> some, some Chinese thing called Baidu. Oh, Baidu, yeah. That you're yeah. killed. Uh, yeah. You're a genius. Uh, I just read it. Or you the read list. the internet. Yes, yeah. I read the internet. Uh, number 10 is Translator. So you had number two is Translate. Number 10 is Translator. Hmm. I, if you bump those together, they'd only get up to... 24 million, so they'd be still be not even close place. for close. weather. Number number 11, real smart. I do this a lot, or I should do this more often. Mm-hmm. Restaurants near me. I did it all through Europe. Give totally. me good restaurants. Yeah. Um, <laughs> funny thing about restaurants. Yeah. Um, my wife was giving me so much praise for all the great restaurants I was finding. And I'm like, nice. I, did you take thank it? you? <laughs> I was like, thank <laughs> you. Um, I'm going to tell you a huge insider secret here. <laughs> Can I tell you? I'm going to tell you tell me, a huge insider. I'm secret. I'm about to travel. So tell you, me you ready. Yeah. You're going to want to write this down. I think. Okay. I'm writing it. You down. Google. Yep. Best. <laughs> okay. Restaurants. That's it. That's it. Not even near me. A map comes up. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> See, you're done. I don't even have to Google map anymore. No. Man. No. I love progress. Right? And so she Thanks, was, Obama. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, that that's great. That's a great tip. Thank you for that. Yeah, I think, you know, we're gonna get at least double or triple our subscriber rate off that tip right there. That's huge. Life hack. Uh, next one is movies at, at number 12, and that's 3.3, 3.4 million searches a month. People are 2.7 million times more interested in the letter G <laughs> than, <they laughs> than <are> movies. movies. <laughs> the movie industry is failing us. Thanks a lot, Netflix. Thanks a lot. Oh, yeah, right. Number 13 is speed test because now people are like, crap, Ooh. I can't download this movie fast enough. Right. What's going on with my internet? I can't YouTube to MP3 this thing fast this enough. This is not going fast enough. I need enough. a speed test. Have you done a speed test recently? No. I, I wanted either. to in Europe. Man, Ooh. our internet speeds were all over the place. Really? We stayed in four different places. Right. All over the place. Okay. The best place mm-hmm. was a Hilton Garden Inn in Brussels. Of course it was. The place... America. Oh, uh, it was amazing. Yeah. The worst place was this old ass, uh, obviously old 
a, a huge room hotel in Florence. Mm-hmm. Our ceilings were at least 19 feet tall. What? Yes. We had a giant wardrobe with three doors on it. Mm-hmm. One massive door with a mirror on it in the middle and then two, two, two side doors that were smaller yeah. that would rattle every time you walked around our room. Oh my God. The tiles would like slip under your feet because they weren't fully secure. You had me until the last two pieces. You said. <laughs> I was like, well, why did you care about the internet? Right. I mean, there were definitely pros and cons to this room. <laughs> right. Not going to lie. <laughs> but it was, it was a beautiful room. I mean, That's 19 awesome. foot ceilings. Come on, man. Yeah. There's a patio out the side yeah. that looked out over a garden. Yeah. So. Sounds like talented Mr. Ripley. Yeah. That movie? <laughs> no. They have this like great estate in Italy. It's oh, awesome. That's yeah. kind of what it was like. Sounds like it. Yeah. Uh, Did you have like a personal yacht? No. Mm. Tried to get that room. Dang it. Couldn't Matt Damon it. and Qu- uh, Gwyneth Paltrow and the other guy. Dang. Had that. I should see that movie. You should. It's actually a really good movie. Is uh, he as talented as he sounds? In like a weird way. Yeah. Yeah, it's a twist. I'm not going to tell you that. All right, should we wrap it up here with number 14 and number 15? Yep. Number 14, horoscope. So horoscope. I want to know how much Americans drive this these search results. Um, like it's I all in English. I would love to see this. Baidu. Baidu is, is not down at like, 55 with B. I don't know, man. Right. That's true. Why do you ask that? Well, just like, I don't know. Like, I feel like a lot of these terms are very American. Like, restaurants near me. There was a joke in there because you Googled best restaurants, but the <laughs> highest the highest result does not include the word best. It just says restaurants. Like, people are looking for <laughs> Applebee's and here's what, Olive Garden. Here's what I've learned. Which are solid. Here's Original <laughs> chicken roll-up, man. Here's what I've learned. Throw the word best in there. Get out of town. Life hack? Get out of town. Life hack. <laughs> best. Great. Favorite. Huge. Huge. Just <laughs> sure. You're getting into the porn. Huge restaurants. You're getting into the porn type of search there. I'm looking for a really non-intimate restaurant. I need a huge <laughs> restaurant. I'm hoping for like three levels where the top two levels are like closed all the time because there's nobody up there. <laughs> like all these... All these restaurants you see at NBA arenas. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Sorry, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> um, my wife was telling a story about at work how um, at team meetings they pass around like giving the, you know, some form of update or some form of like story that you can share. And everybody mm-hmm. always loves the one the stories that she shares everybody you know they take turns Mm -hmm. some are clearly going to be better than others right and everybody just unloads on her how great hers are Hmm. (laughs) and she's like i know because i use this little trick (laughs) where i google best stories about blah 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 (laughs) when everybody (laughs) else is googling stories about blah 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 (laughs) Right? Like, this it's not awesome. that hard. It's no. not that hard. Life hack, everybody. Life hack. Type best in front of everything. You are now in Before you're Googling. If you're Googling maps, best, best maps. maps. <laughs> Google <laughs> Maps is the best. True to that. Double true. <laughs> okay, what's 15? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have one more. One more. And number 15. See, it's way better going best to worst. That's true. On this type of list, I guess. Number 15. Uh, oops. I already did number 15. Give us number 16. No, here's number 14. <laughs> okay, give us number 14. At number 14, drum roll, please. <laughs> Cheap flights. <laughs> All right. right. <laughs> yeah. That's great job, America. It's. <laughs> I know this is like the world, but like, I feel like in Europe, just all flights are cheap unless you're going outside the continent. Yeah, I mean. So like we're came really up, the ones that are Googling cheap flights. I'm pretty sure they came up with the idea. For ten dollar flights, right? But it's because they could. It's yeah. true consumer fashion. We're like, we want the cheapest. We want the cheapest. Quality doesn't matter. Do we want best cheap flights? I think we should figure that one out. We should probably. Google I'm going to Google that. See what happens. But we don't Google. Not not right now. No, we'll Google later we'll and Google update you later. guys. 
or y'all or whatever. Wild card topic. Wild card, bitches! Yeah! Kirk or Picard? Picard. Kirk or Picard? Picard. Why? Um, he's just so much more level-headed, and he's just so much more like. Uh, okay, here's here's how I was raised. I was raised on the phrase "better safe than sorry." <laughs> Okay. And that is Captain Picard in a, in a nutshell. Interesting. More so than Kirk. Kirk was a better punch than safe. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I kind of relate a little bit more to Kirk. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I mean, I like, I think I like Picard more. Yeah. But I, I you know, I, I really, I don't know, there's just something about Kirk. I like a captain that can just go get his hands dirty and kick some ass mm-hmm. rather than, now I, now I really do like being able to, talk my way out of things right i've done a lot i think picard I think as an adult i don't think i've ever gotten in a fight <laughs> like a like a like a real like fight. A fist fight yeah i think because i've been able to talk my way out of it picard probably made out with two or three women the whole time all movies all right tv shows kirk i don't i can't even come up with a basic count and kirk was on tv for four less years than picard was so that's true. There's a stat. Kirk was Kirk was a la- ladies' man for sure. Maybe that's why I relate to him. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss all the ladies, Kiss punch all, all the ladies. dudes. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah. So yeah, that was a good. That was a good wild card. We went, topic. We went down the rabbit hole. There was <laughs> so the wild card. We did some rabbit holes. We did some Many wild cards. Um, I think it was a success though. Number it was two very good. in the books. Podcast number two. Keep listening, everybody. Yep. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Uh, have a wonderful day, and you are now on a more enlightened bro. Yes. Bye. <laughs> That's how we wrap it up. We say bye every time. <laughs> and bye. And bye. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you for listening to the Enlightened Bros podcast. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and follow Enlightened Bros on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you.